Namo Buddhaya, Amitofo from Taipei, Taiwan. I want to thank Aya Tataloka for giving me this very precious opportunity to send my warmest best of greetings to all Ayas and friends of Dhamma Dharini community and also to our respective international Theravada Bhikkhuni Sangha. My name is Christy Chang. I'm the former president of Sakyadita International Association of Buddhist Women. And together with our current president, Jasuma Tenzin Pomo, because the two of us agreed that it's very important to have the female presence and voice in the general uh, Buddhist community. So we agreed to serve as the you know, two of the eight joint presidents for International Buddhist Confederation, IBC, based in Delhi. This is one of the largest international Buddhist umbrella currently. So Aya Tataloka has asked me to speak about the importance of supporting the Bhikkhuni and Bhikkhuni Sangha and also to introduce Sakyadita. So I thought it would be appropriate that I share what I wrote on the Sakyadita website when I stepped down as the president. Uh, so bear with me, let me read this out to you. So I wrote, I'm especially grateful to all the female teachers. They were ordained, especially the bhikkhuni and bhikkhunis. This does not mean in any way that I'm less appreciative towards male teachers. It's just that women do need female practitioners as their role models. And having female role models really hasn't come that easily. Throughout our history, under thousands of years of social and cultural conditioning in which men have always been valued over women. Outstanding female practitioners before this generation of ours have struggled but persisted their path, unshakable in their dharma practice. I consider our generation, at least for myself, extremely privileged and fortunate to have the guidance from all these wonderful female dharma teachers. In addition to continuing their own dharma practice, these wonderful female practitioners have guided us with their unique feminine, humble, and gentle leadership, as well as boundless compassion. How very blessed we've been. So this is my own big tuny teacher, Venerable Ray Miao. Uh, it is because of her that I took refuge under the Triple Gen uh, back in 1995, Honolulu, Hawaii, that's where I met her. And also because of her, I got connected with Venerable Kama Lekshay's Homo, one of the three major founders of Sakadita. So the first Sakadita conference, actually Sakadita means daughters of the Buddha, is a new coined Sanskrit word at the end of the very first gathering. So the first conference, you can see the banner here says International Conference on Buddhist Nuns. And it took place in Bodhigaya 1987. So together with uh, Venerable Dhammananda, who was back then Dr. Tetsuman Kapli Singh, and also Aya Kema here, uh, the three of them started corresponding and they started to share the situation of Buddhist women in those days. So they thought it would be very important, very wonderful to bring everyone, if possible, many of them came together in 1987. And sitting right next to Venerable Lekshe was the bhikkhu, actually, a uh, very famous Maha Gosananda from Cambodia. He also came to support. So there has always been the bhikkhu support. Um, also, there was His Holiness the Dalai Lama who came to inaugurate the Sakadita conference back then. So some photos to share with you from the first gathering. And Venerable Damananda recalled, over 200 people from 26 different countries attended the daily conference sessions. The Samdes Maha Gosananda of Cambodia brought a white-robed American nun to attend the conference. People like Kusuma Devandra and myself, who were still lay women at the time of this conference, have now become ordained. The conference provided a fertile ground for Buddhist women like us to grow intellectually, psychologically, and spiritually. 
And since 1987, the second conference took place four years later in Bangkok, also organized by Venerable Damananda. And then two years, every two years since then, uh, the Sakadita conferences have been brought to the different places in Asia. And last year, we took it to Sydney, the Blue Mountains in Australia, 2019. And our next, our 17th Sakadita conference will take place in December 2021 in Borneo, Kuching, Sarawak, East Malaysia. And of course, you're all welcome to join us. Also, men are welcome. As I show you, there were bhikkhus too, right? So to encourage more of you to come and join us, I thought that maybe I can share some photos from past conferences. Uh, for example, from the fifth conference in Cambodia, you see Venerable Kusuma and Ranjani there. And Jasuma Tenzin Pomo actually attended her very first Sakadita conference uh, this time. Uh, because before that, she was uh, meditate, meditating in the Cave of Snow. Sixth conference in Lumbini, where the Buddha was born, in Nepal. And then we see the Vietnamese nuns, actually, they were still studying, uh, you know, for their PhD degree in Delhi University. You see Venerable Liu Fat there. Uh, they came to, they have gone with the Sakadita conferences. The seventh Sakadita conference was the first conference that I attended before I knew what it was about, just because I speak two languages. Uh, and I know Venerable Lekshe, so I became involved in all aspects of the organization. And uh, the, every Sakadita conference, we have a theme. So the theme for the seventh was Bridging Worlds. And this is the painting of Bridging Worlds by Venerable Q1. Uh, imagine, you know, she's the one who started the very first Buddhist university in the Mahayana Chinese tradition in Taiwan at the age of 75, okay? So this is when she was 93, when she welcomed us to use the university for free for our Sakadita gathering. And the eighth conference took place in Seoul, Korea. This is where I met Aya Tataloka. So Sakadita brings everyone together. So the ninth conference in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So you can see how the conferences have developed, but still every time we chant together in different languages and you see all the different colors of the robes. And the panel, international panel presentations, discussions, once again, Speaking of the importance of having the Bikuni Sangha, I'm showing you this picture here because this young lady, young woman, she was saying that she aspired so much to join the monastic order, and yet she heard there was no Bikuni Sangha in Malaysia back then, 2006. So she gave up. So we have wonderful speakers. And we meditate together every morning for the first hour, uh, learning from teachers of different traditions. And we chant together in different languages in the evening. And this is Aya Santini from Indonesia. I'm sure you recognize her. And we have um, the nuns from China, India, very happily together with the Sunnis from Korea. And we pray together in different languages, dedicating merit to all the 10th conference in Mongolia. And this is not a temple. This is Hotel Mongolia, interestingly, and the gears. Um, and this is Myung Sun Sunin from Korea. And the 11th conference took place in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And there were so many people that came, over 2,000. So it was impossible to do a group photo without Photoshop. And the conference running. We had a lot of small group discussions and look at the happy, smiling faces of the young Vietnamese Kunis. And at the 12th Sakadita conference, uh, when I was the president at that time, I was introduced to this baby elephant. Together, we, you know, upheld the 
Aya Tara to our conference venue, which was still under construction, but that was okay. It was a beautiful setting, the forest, and uh, everyone was very happy together. And for the 13th Sakadita Conference, we brought everyone back to Vaishali, where the very first Bikuni Ma Prajapati was ordained. And it was really back to the grassroots, okay? Um, so in the Sakadita Conference, we try to provide translation, sometimes even up to six languages, all by volunteers. And this is how basic our translation booth was back in Vaishali. Uh, made up literally paper. Okay. And it's really cold, freezing cold, uh, the coldest winter in India. And our international bikuni sangha you are seeing here, so happily together in the Mahaprajapati temple in Vaishali. And the 14th Sakadita conference in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Again, and Ajahn Brahm was there to support us, which we were all very grateful. And we have, in addition to the panel presentation, discussion, meditation, chanting, we have the workshops. We have really great time together. And also the pilgrimage every time after the conference. And this time, of course, we went to Borobudur and we meditated at sunrise. For the 15th Sakadita Conference in Hong Kong University, so it's state-of-the-art facility. And we have nuns from Myanmar, from the Himalayan regions, from Vietnam. Everyone was very happy together. And we went to the pilgrimage to the Big Buddha. We were all looking upward to the Big Buddha. Uh, the 16th Conference uh, took place in the Blue Mountains in Australia. Again, many, many photos, okay, up on the internet. Please feel most welcome to seek us out. And of course, please feel most welcome to join us in Borneo, our next conference, December 2021. So thank you for your kind attention. And once again, happy Vasak. I hope you will have a wonderful virtual Vasak this time and uh, may all beings be happy, may all beings be free from suffering.